This is Kate Swoboda, creator of YourCourageousLife.com, director of the Courageous Living Coach Certification at TeamCLCC.com, and author of the book, The Courage Habit, which is available at booksellers and at Amazon. The Your Courageous Life podcast is all about going after what you want and creating and living a more courageous, emotionally resilient life. Might drop a couple of F-bombs, so maybe don't listen with your kids in the backseat of the car. And here we go with today's episode. Hey, everybody. It's Kate. And today I've got something of a personal story for you. And it's a story that I like to tell to illustrate really why your life matters. So when I was in my early 20s, I was struggling with extreme clinical depression. And I remember the depression was very situational. It was one of those things where if enough good things would happen, I would react to that by being in a better mood and I'd basically start to feel okay. But if enough bad things happened... I would just go into this space of spending days at home and not eating and fitfully sleeping in between bouts of crying. And particularly in my early 20s, I, when I was in graduate school, there was a year where I lived with this terribly unkind roommate and... um <laughs> always wondered what happened to her. I mean, she just, it was like one of those things where like, if there was a way to be mean, she was going to find the way. And compounding matters, money was so tight in those days that my bank account balance was often down to my last $10. You know, if I got the flu or something, I didn't know how I was going to afford cough drops. I tried to go without all the time. So it was in the midst of a very difficult time that I just plunged into this place where for a couple weeks I was just crying and fitfully sleeping, not leaving my house for days on end. And as I'm remembering it, the roommate went out of town and I was just in the house for a really long time. Finally, I was like, okay, I'll leave the house for a bit. I'll take a walk. And I finally did leave the house. I walked over to the grocery store that was a few blocks away. And the depression that I was in, in that moment was so heavy, man. I mean, it felt like a weight was just anchored around me, dragging me down, making my footsteps heavier, slowing me down. And I remember walking up and down the aisles of the grocery store, just so achingly sad that I was willing myself not to burst into tears in the middle of the grocery store. Like thoughts were going through my head, such as, what's the point of even buying food? What's the point of eating? What's the point of anything? You know, it was just this tired, exhausted sadness. And it just, it really did feel very real. Like, why would anyone buy food? Why would anyone bother? So I ended up getting a couple things and I made it to the line, and the cashier began ringing me up. And she noticed that I was struggling. And in that moment, she made a decision that changed my life. She chatted me up, she made eye contact, and even though I hadn't told her a thing about what I was going through, she looked at me and she said that I was doing great and I was going to be okay. Cashier. Didn't know her, never met her, never seen her before, couldn't recall having seen her before. She said all of this stuff with sincerity, with empathy, devoid of pity. She simply saw a human being who was suffering. And so she spoke into it. And because she spoke into it and saw me, it changed my life. In the moment when we collided, I mean, I was fucking spiraling. I was doing everything I knew to do, but I could not see the forest for the trees, and it was scaring the shit out of me. If you've ever been in that kind of a free fall where you just don't even understand how it is possible, like, like I remember being like, like logically, what the hell is going on here? 
what is wrong with me? Why can't I snap out of this? What is, you know? And I just couldn't. And it just felt like the hits kept on coming. And then I would beat myself up like, oh God, Kate, you know, there's so many people who have it so much worse off than you. What's wrong with you that you aren't grateful? And I mean, that was its own, you know? So I was just spiraling and I was trying to do things to feel better, but nothing was making me feel better. And that scared me. But her choice that day changed me. I remember walking out of the store, a little crack of light having entered the picture. Another human being saw me, saw my suffering. And she didn't know anything about me, but she believed that I was capable of feeling better. She didn't do anything radical. She didn't quote unquote fix me. She couldn't have anyway, right? She was simply kind and open-hearted. And what I learned from that experience is that our lives matter far more than we can possibly realize, far more than we can possibly give them credit for. We can never know when, just by being ourselves, we will be someone else's gift. And that means that you, the person listening to this right now, You and your life matter far more than you could possibly realize right now. You have done in your lifetime untold kindnesses that no one's ever even told you about. You have probably been someone who has looked someone in the eye before and let them know that they were seen in a moment that you don't even remember and you don't even really think anything of now, but that made all the difference for them. That's what happened for me. A random moment at a grocery store changed everything. And I think too that we do ourselves a gross disservice when we assume that because of our occupations or we assume that unless we take some kind of massive action that we can't have an impact. Because I'm here to tell you right now that a cashier at an Albertson's grocery store in Davis, California made a difference at a critical moment in my life nearly 18 years ago simply because she noticed that I was suffering and made a choice to be kind. It wasn't a fancy job title or strategy that made the difference. It was simple kindness. Your life matters. And maybe you're sitting here now, you're listening to this and you're, you've been really caught up lately in like, what is my life purpose? Or maybe it feels like the only way to really feel fulfilled is through your job or the type of work that you do. Or maybe you think that your life isn't courageous or meaningful because you think that it's ordinary and unremarkable. But you can never really know the impact of your existence. You can't. Your impact certainly doesn't come from your job description. It certainly doesn't come from doing flashy things. You know, my guess would be that that cashier just went about her day after I left. I don't recall seeing her again. I have a vague memory of, you know, going to the grocery store that same one a couple times to get things I needed when I felt better and kind of wondering if I'd bump into her, but I don't recall And I would think I'd remember it if I had. But all these years later, I'll always remember her. Because her kindness was so utterly transformative as to be unforgettable. I think a lot about unseen interconnectedness since that experience. I think a lot about how every single one of us at every single moment has this opportunity to do small random acts of kindness that can impact people's lives. I mean, it it brings me to tears, the staggering awesomeness of the ways that we as humans can positively impact one another and how little it really takes to do that. You know, If you get bogged down sometimes thinking about all the things in the world that are wrong and the people who are suffering, you're not alone. I feel that too. 
I feel that in ways that, uh, you know, they just go straight to the core. It's so painful to know that people suffer and that there are a lot of times where we just can't do anything about it. You know, we can know that someone's suffering in a war-torn country. We can know that people are going hungry, but there's no direct action we can take to make absolutely sure that anyone stops suffering. We can each do our little part, but there's a sort of pain, I think, in knowing that we can't just know that people suffer and boom, do something, fix it. It's hard. It's frustrating. So what if there's an, a, a way that we can change the, the world just by deciding to positively impact one another in the small little ways? You know, I'm recording this at a time where there have been a number of suicides in my community. And I, I think of things like, you know, how often when someone commits suicide, everybody uh, goes, how could they have not known they mattered, you know? And I think of the direction I think I was headed at that point in my early 20s, the exhaustion of it and just feeling like I was in quicksand and there was really kind of no point in hustling to try to get out of it. It was, it was really turning a bad corner. And that cashier at a grocery store, I just needed someone to see me, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why that moment had such an impact on me, but it did. So who are you in your life right now? Can you give the hug to the friend? Can you say, I'm there for you? Call me anytime. I don't care if it's 2 a.m. When your coworker looks stressed out, can you ask her if she wants to talk? Can you bring her a latte? Can you put a few dollars in the outstretched cup on the street corner without judging the person holding the cup or wondering if they'll use it for the so-called right reasons? Can you follow the spontaneity of sending someone a card for no reason at all? Your life matters so much. And this is an invitation that I'm offering to you to risk the vulnerability and practice the courage of really directly letting other people know that they matter. Extend some kindness to the stranger. Do the good deed for the person you don't even know. Say the prayer. Breathe with someone. Smile, make eye contact. It doesn't cost you anything to listen. It doesn't cost you anything to make eye contact. And you can never know when that smile, that dollar, that card will make all the difference in the world for someone's life. Your life matters. And I hope that in hearing this today, you really understand the point of power that you stand at. I hope you really understand just how much positive impact you can make. Not because you have a fancy title, not because you have a ton of money to donate, not because you've got some flashy strategy, because you're not going to fix anybody. But there's something beautiful about just being yourself and that being someone's gift. All right, that's today's podcast. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. You know you can continue the work and the fun if you want to. Head on over to yourcourageouslife.com forward slash begin and become a Your Courageous Life subscriber because as soon as you sign up, you get access to an entire library of worksheets and audios and other bonuses. And of course, you'll be receiving more courage in your inbox. And who wouldn't love that? You can learn more about the Courageous Living Coach Certification at teamclcc.com. You can get the Courage Habit at your local bookseller on Amazon, wherever you like. We can even connect on social media. 
I'm on Facebook at Your Courageous Life. So look for facebook.com forward slash Your Courageous Life. And I'm on Instagram as Kate Courageous. And I'd love to connect with you on Instagram. So here's to you using these courageous tools in your life and creating a real ripple effect of good. And again, thanks so much for listening. I love it that you're here.